Hello, everyone. I am with a special guest today, Julie Holden, and a lot of you know who that is. She's uh, known as a moderator on Hidden True Crimes YouTube channel, but Julie also does a lot behind the scenes. Uh, Julie does a lot of research, and I have decided that I want to share some of this research because you, Julie, discovered something um, really interesting this week. We will call it an educated guess. Yeah. We do not know if what Julie discovered is true, but I think it is interesting enough that I want to share it with all of you and allow Julie to go in to a bit of her process, how she discovers these type of things. It's really fascinating to me. And I also want to show you, too, how Hidden True Crime is truly a village. It's a community. Mm. I'm so grateful for all of the input and skills from so many in the Hidden True Crime community. And Julie is one of them. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for being <laughs> on today. And with that being said, I'm going to let Julie explain some of her research. Thank you. Okay. So if you share my screen. Yeah. All right. So back in July of 2021, if we get in our little flashback, <laughs> the probable our cause. Portal. Document, yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, our, our flashback portal. The probable cause document came out of Chandler into the um, Charles's murder probable cause document for Lori for sure, and then another un, unnamed. Well, it was redacted uh, co-conspirator. Yeah, to remind and, everyone. It yeah. was when charges came down for Lori uh, when it came to Charles's uh, murder. And so they they shared, uh, Chandler shared the probable cause doc. And this was before we got any other FOIA docs from Chandler. The Chandler evidence dump, the Gilbert evidence dump hadn't come down yet. So this was a fascinating time when we got this probable cause document. Sorry, yes. go ahead. No, exactly. Thank you for putting that more clearly than I could. Um, I just remember it came out and we just feasted on it. <laughs> Everybody was, you know, oh my gosh, look at this. What, look at that. What do you think this blank spot is? What do you think that blank spot is? So we're going to work backwards and I'm just going to show you three spots in the document. At that time, I worked really hard to try to figure out what the redactions were. My process is to retype the document It's in, in its entirety, which is not too hard to do with a document like this. It's not inside a police report frame format um template it's uh it's clearly just a word document and so mm -hmm. it's using a standard font it's using it's just pretty straightforward it was really not very hard at all um so on this last page everybody wanted to know what was in that last spot um it is recommended that Lori Vallow blank be charged with conspiracy to commit murder for the death of her husband Charles Vallow Oh my gosh. And I remember this when we got this mm -hmm. again, um, it was redacted. It was fascinating. Everyone wanted to know what that was. I mean, what does it say? Does it say Lori Vallow, that evil person? I mean, does it say Lori Vallow and somebody else? Melanie Gibb. Seems like a good idea. A lot Seems of like it would be, I was hoping it would be Chad Daybell. Other people were hoping it would be Melanie Gibb, as I recall. Really hoping it would be Melanie Gibb. And um, so if you think about, if you're of a certain age, you think about back when you were in elementary school and they had those overhead projectors. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the overhead projector, uh, is, is a printed document with a piece of plastic on top of the printed document that has exactly what's on the printed document underneath it. So you could lift it up. You kind of, the teacher would peel it off and then she put it on the, the overhead projector and the light would shine up and it would go through the lens and it would display on the the, the slide. Uh, yes. Thing, right. And then sometimes she would take her little pen and she would mark on it and you would learn things. Well, <laughs> my process, hopefully. How things have changed, but I remember. Yes. Yeah, this is before the arrow smart boards and all this other stuff, these amazing things that they have in schools. My process is exactly the same thing, basically just on the computer. So I take the, let's say this is the piece of paper that's the printed out piece. And I make an overlay to go on top of it that says exactly the same thing. And then I type into those spots to see what fits. The reason why this is better than measuring the spot and measuring names is that computers use variable width fonts. 
So like the word ill, I feel ill, I-L-L, -L, is a small word if it's three letters, but the word was, I was going to the store, is a small word, three letters, it's wide. So, so despite both having three letters, they're precisely. completely different widths. Precisely. A long time ago, uh, typesetters used um, fixed space fonts. Every single letter was the same width. That's why an I would have like a big long doohickey on it and would be, you know, an I was as fat as a W, oh, basically. Interesting. Yeah. So even though Chad Daybell, D-A-Y-B-E-L-L, -L, and Melanie Gibb, M-E-L-A-N-I-E, D-A-Y-B-E-L-L. -L. Yeah, it's seven and four letters. They have the same number of letters in their name. Melanie Gibb is a lot wider than Chad Daybell because he's got those two L's in his name. So um, let's see. It's right here. I made these little videos to explain to people. So what you're seeing is that's the text where I typed in and Melanie Gibb to see if it would fit. Now you're seeing the screen we were just looking at effectively. Now we take it and we see if it'll lay over the top. It will not. It will Melanie not. Melanie Gibb is too big. And you threw an and too. You were figuring I that did. out too. Be yeah. Which is weird because you don't have to redact the word and. That's a really yeah. good point. That's a really good point. Why did they redact the end? Because they didn't want it, us to know it was two people, maybe. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Interesting. But you oh, figured out it was an and. Yeah. Yeah. Now, one caveat. Now, this this does happen to be correct. This does happen to be the right. We know now because we we've, we've Chandler has since released a, a an unredacted version of this document. So we know so, that that's right. Different. It might have even been Gilbert. So in the FOIA documents that came down months later, mm -hmm. uh, last year though, the Gilbert, so the Gilbert evidence dump that came after Chandler, I like to kind of divide the FOIA doc so people know which ones we're talking about. Yes. I believe it was in Gilbert. They came out with the unredacted version of this probable cause document. So months I later, we all learned what everything was. Right. I think it was actually in Chandler. But the oh, thing was it in Chandler? I, it was, but the thing that I discovered that I want to talk about at the end was in Gilbert, for sure. Okay, okay. And Gilbert's more recent than Chandler, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah. And to remind everyone, every, all of the FOIA docs, the Chandler, the Gilbert, this probable cause are on our Patreon. Oh yeah, that's where yeah. I got them. That's where you got them, yeah. Well, the probable cause was circulating everywhere. I think they even officially released it out of the court. I don't even know. But yeah, everyone can get the probable cause, right? All the other stuff that I've been working with, I get off of your Patreon, which is fantastic. Thank you for going to all that trouble and expense. <laughs> You're welcome. At any rate, um, so yeah, you can see from this video that it's and Chad Dable, right? And that and Melanie Gibb, it didn't fit, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, let me see. There was another one I wanted to revisit in our Wayback Portal. <laughs> it was... Do, 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 do. Scrolling up, and this should look very familiar to everybody. Um, sorry, give me just a minute. Yeah, no worries. Ah, it's this one. People really, really wanted to know what this document, this section of the document said. Um, she reached out to Alex Cox. And we're pretty sure this is an and and an and to warn them of the elaborate plan that we're sure that's probably Adam and Charles had. The curious sentence that people couldn't quite suss out was somebody provided Lori with updates regarding somebody's whereabouts and asked Lori if she wanted to run interference. Okay. Now the somebody who provided Lori with the updates, Summer fit into that slot and everybody pretty much agreed that was probably Summer. But right. we didn't know whose whereabouts. And I thought at first that it was Tylee. Um, some people suggested Colby and some people suggested Adam. I checked Adam's whereabouts and it didn't fit. It was too long. So I'm like, well, it's gotta be somebody else. So I thought Tylee, I mean, that doesn't make as much sense. Adam makes sense. Adam makes sense. Well, so here's, and once I put in Tylee's and, once I also stepped away from the entire process and just thought, let's think about this. Does this make sense? I'm like, that doesn't, does that make sense? I don't even think that makes sense. Adams, it's gotta be Adams. I thought, well, 
one of the things I've learned, and when you retype an entire document, you learn so much about people and like their little quirky habits and the weird th things that they do, like their typing habits, like two spaces after a period and stuff like that. Yeah. I thought, what about typos? What if they left out the apostrophe? So uh, under that assumption, it's right here. Sorry about this. There we go. Um, oh, it's not that one. It's this one. This is me trying to put Tylee's in and Tylee's does fit. You'll see that it fits pretty, pretty precisely. It does. It does. Um, oh, so the S is a little cut off, but I guess you move it S, over. No, you're right. The S is cut off and the, and the rest of the sentence is just a little, a little blurry, a little fat. It doesn't fit like, like totally, totally fit. It's really close though. It's close enough with error for screen um, problems and yeah, type, typographical issues, it, it does fit. But Adams without an apostrophe fits quite precisely. It does look like the S slops over the, the end of the redaction. Again, these are, it's. So in other words, though, Adams only fits with the typo because it yep. should have an apostrophe there. Correct. And in fact, since we got the unredacted version from Chandler many, many months later, that's exactly what it was. It was Adams with the apostrophe missing. Yeah. And I remember this. I remember when you did these redactions and we put it on our Patreon mm -hmm. account. This was this was one we discussed. Like, yeah, it, nothing was fitting. And that makes sense why Adam, Adam with an apostrophe doesn't work. But Adam right. with a typo does. Now, I've gone in and I've... I've, I've typed in, this is just, I just, this is obviously I can't guess entire paragraphs, but I've typed in the, the text that we now know out of the unredacted version of the document. Because okay. I, I wanted to continue to study this and to study, like I said, the process and what they're doing. Um, and I made a note about it at the time about the apostrophe and the, um, where is that? Oh, right there yep. in the margin. Yeah. And the note is not important, but I just wanted to point out that this is, this is, I have now double checked this with the unredacted version. That is exactly what it says. It's Adams without an S. Yeah. Yeah. You say, you I'm going to just read it. Uh, others think this is Adam, but it is precisely Tylee, but it could be Adams without the apostrophe is right. the note you made. Right, right, right. At the time. Um, and then I'm going to give one more example. And it is. Um, Wasn't Melanie Boudreau right there? Uh, another. Yes, it was one? Melanie Boudreau. It was. It was a different one though. Shoot, where is it? Hang on, I'll find it. <laughs> I'm looking too on our Patreon account right now. So Here, this one. Okay, so in this document. It's down here. Okay, so the last one. Um, this is another one where, and, and the reason why I'm giving all these examples is this. Sorry to interrupt myself, but I, I want people to understand that you can pick something like I picked Tylee's and it looks really good and you can be wrong. Yes. You can rule things out, like with the first example, Melanie Gibb clearly did not fit. And how many different ways can you misspell Melanie Gibb? I mean, uh, Melanie could not have an E, Gibb could be G-I-B with one B. I don't think that that's likely. Yeah, Melanie Gibb's a pretty straightforward name. Boudreau and Pawlowski are tricky names Yes, spell. And her first name is spelled without an, an E. e. Exactly. And, you know, so well, right. I'm on there. Mm-hmm. This is to say that um, even if you think you know you have the answer, it could be a name you don't know. It could be a misspelled name you do know. So when we come up with these suggestions, when I come up with these suggestions, I just want everybody to take it with a big grain of salt and understand this is just us sleuthing, trying to figure things out, trying to put pieces together. It makes you think about what different scenarios could be. But we don't have, I don't have the answers. I don't, it's just a little, it's an educated guess, as you said at the beginning. Yeah. And, and let me explain what you're doing is science. It's, <laughs> it's real. It's factual. Forensic. As you pointed out, I like how you explained that we can rule things out, but we can never say this is it definitely when you're looking at a redaction. 
Exactly. It's an educated guess. It's always going to be an educated guess. But there are different ways that you can narrow down the possibilities. For example, look elsewhere in the document. If the name is unredacted elsewhere in the document, it's very unlikely that it's going to be un, un, it's going to stay redacted in that spot. It might, it might, especially if it's a really um, hot uh, reveal, right? I mean, by hot, I just mean like um, explosive or scandalous or you know something they don't want you to know. They're not trying to be deceitful, the police, the, the law enforcement. It's just that they might let the name be elsewhere in the document and cover it up in another place. That is less likely, though. Usually right. when they redact a name, they just redact it everywhere. Because they give the document to somebody, they say, redact this name everywhere, redact this name everywhere, redact this name everywhere. They're not really putting it up to judgment. So I'm sort of contradicting myself. What I'm saying is, if it seems like something that might be particularly scandalous, it's still going to be redacted everywhere, more than likely. It's just easier for them that way. It's just straightforward. Redaction is just cover this name up everywhere in this document. Um, so this is another, this is the last section I'm going to talk about where, uh, a typo, I, I, I managed to figure out a typo. Um, I think what I will do is just go over to, yes, the, the, this section, sorry. It's this last Melanie Boudreaux. Okay. So mm. yellow one down here. Got it. So, so when Lori found out about Charles, and Adam coming to town. She believed that they were going to kill her for a life insurance money. Uh, she reached out to somebody for help. She told somebody in a text message that she needed to speak with her ASAP. There's a clue. <laughs> uh, and, and again, to my point, they don't uh, delete every her or his. They just delete the names. The Somebody replied and Lori indicated that she was on the phone trying to figure out what to do. Big long redaction. We can't possibly know. Lori then asked for the assistance of someone and Alex Cox. Okay. So everybody was pretty sure that this was Melanie Boudreaux and Alex Cox throughout this paragraph. And right. this was one where people were pretty, all pretty much agreeing. So the problem is um, Melanie Boudreaux did not fit in that spot. Uh, if you put Melanie Boudreaux, Boudreaux bleh, excuse me, Boudreaux spelled correctly, it didn't fit. By the way, Boudreaux and Pulaski oh. are almost exactly the same length. So it doesn't really matter whether it's Boudreaux or Pulaski when it's spelled correctly. Oh, that's interesting. They're the same yeah, length. They're almost exactly the same length. They may even be exactly the same thing, same length, which is... Thanks to Melanie for making it easy on us. <laughs> <laughs> Marrying so, someone that helps us yeah. conveniently put her name in. But what I thought was, what if they spelled it wrong? And they did. It fits exactly. And once again, once the redactions came out, oh my God, they had the hardest time with Melanie's last name. There's sometimes where they spell it B O U D R E A X without the U. Uh, there I are a lot of ways to misspell this. Yeah. I know how to spell it because I've typed it out a billion times doing this work, but it took me a long time to, it's, you know, it's a hard name. Yeah. So that's our little Wayback Machine, uh, you know portal visit to what we were doing in July of last year and mm -hmm. what the process is and you know how it all works and how I continue I continue to do this with things I, I type out yeah. entire paragraphs and figure out what font it is and you do she, she does this a lot and she shares mm -hmm. a lot with us you know yeah. we've just because it's an educated guest we've never really shared it publicly, but I think it's time. I think we even need to do a series. <laughs> Julie and her. <laughs> My redaction machine. <laughs> yeah. Because she's been right a lot of the time with things that we have discovered. It's amazing what she is right with too. I know we keep calling it educated guesses, but I want to say she's more right than wrong. Well, thank you. That's a nice thing to say. Um, so I was going through the, the Gilbert documents, okay, for some reason or another. I don't even remember why. There's a really nice, this is at the end of, let's see, this is, um, this is the name of this document. If you get into the documents, th this, this document is full of all kinds of fascinating things, including a, basically a summary of the case. Like, this is what we did on this date. This is what we did on that date. Th this, I love this section. I've been reading it. You can read it and you find all kinds of things you never noticed before. Okay. And oh. again, you can find these FOIA documents on our Patreon. Mm -hmm. That's where I got thousands of pages. All uh, all the FOIA documents have been there, you know, mm -hmm. for months. Yeah. Um, I'm going to digress for one second and nerd out for one second. 
when I talk about things like people putting um, two, two spaces after a period, for example, somebody in, in, in Gilbert uses this weird version of an apostrophe. It took me forever to figure out what this uh, character is. I, I'm like, what, so what, what is it? What are you seeing? It's a, it's a space it's, after an apostrophe. Well, no, it's a single character. It's a, and that's a good uh, point too. It's, it's, it's wide because it's a particularly wide apostrophe. If you put a normal apostrophe in there, it would be very narrow. I think it's a grave accent. I'm not sure. Ah, it's, it's so they accent. use that instead of an apostrophe. They're, and I'm telling you, people, they get in their habits and they just type yeah. along. And this person, when he types or she types it, their finger goes to that upper. It's on my keyboard. It's very, it's right below the little swoopy. People do have their habits. For example, yeah. you have to learn who puts two period, who, two spaces after a period still. Yeah. And I remember Julie once saying, who does that? That's so old. Who puts two spaces after a period? And I was like, uh, I do. And I always will because <laughs> it's a habit that's just so hard to break, even though they switch the rule on that. It is. And this person habitually puts this big, giant, grave accent uh, apostrophe. So just an example of things you have to figure out. Yeah. Yes. Because if you had a redaction that had a, a, a possessive on it, you might get it wrong because if it's the person who uses the giant apostrophe, it really dynamically changes the length of whatever name is underneath that. Fascinating. All caps and not all caps also will change it. But again, with that, as with the redactions, they tend to be consistent. If they put the first name in all caps, they do it throughout. They're, they're, they're pretty precise. Honestly, they're cops. Of course, they're going to be precise investigators. So this is what, this is the little gift <laughs> that I found. So uh, this is it. This is the moment. This is what you discovered this week. Yes. And I, I, I want to say something because I'm sort of laughing because it's because I'm calling it a gift. This is obviously a very sad topic and this is a very sad case. And I am not laughing about the fact that we're discussing how a woman was murdered. Um, You're referring to Tammy Davo. Yes. It's obviously completely horrific. But I also think we have all been very curious. Um, you had Joseph Scott Morgan on curious your show. Curious about her cause of death. About her cause of death. Yes. You had Joseph Scott Morgan on your show a couple of weeks ago. We extensively discussed Alex's autopsy report. People want to um, look at those two murders. Uh, rumors of, of, uh, of, of frothy adenomous cone in both of those cases. Um, Alex's was ruled a natural a death. Tammy's was at first. So that's why this is a, an interesting, as I say, a little bit of a gift to us because we're, we want to, we're curious. We want to know. They we want to know. And then, and then they said she was murdered after all. We want to make sense of it. Wow. I mean, it's just, that's, that's flabbergasting to have somebody, um, have somebody be murdered and uh, the person seems to get away with it and the death is real natural. And then now we're turning around and it's not, well, then what was right. it? What was it? You know, <laughs> gosh. So that's what I was noticing and being curious about. And this is one thing we have learned so much from the FOIA documents, from the mm -hmm. Chandler and Gilbert dumps and from probable causes. Mm -hmm. But this is one thing that has been really held tight. Yes. Um, is the cause of, Tammy Daybell's death. Yes. Absolutely. Law enforcement is holding it very close to their, you know, chest and not letting yeah. anybody know. Yeah, exactly. Um, and the reason why I call this a gift is because for whatever reason, they chose to put this in two redaction spots. So I see this and my mind is going, why is, why is there two spots there? Is it manual strangulation is it ligature strangulation is it uh um i think the third one is uh hanging strangulation we, we know it's not hanging we know it's not ligature i mean again obviously i'm a joseph scott morgan fan but but he has mentioned that if you know ligature leaves a very obvious mark hanging is very very obvious many people have uh suggested and surmised that perhaps she was she was throttled to death um the reasons why that might throttle not... as in I'm actually unfamiliar with that term. Yeah. To, to choke someone. Okay. It's one of the causes of Gabby Petito's death, I believe was throttling throttling. Okay. Manual strangulation and throttling are the same thing. 
Okay. Thank you. Um, and, and that manual strangulation is two words. Did you try that? I did. It didn't work. Okay. I tried everything, uh, regarding strangulation. And then I tried to squeeze manual strangulation in that second longer spot and it didn't fit, but it was clear that this was two thoughts at this point, because manual strangulation almost fit in the second spot. The first spot was not going to be, it didn't seem to be a modifier of the second spot. Okay. It to be, I just was starting to feel like these are two separate kind of thoughts. And that's probably why the person going through and redacting is like, near, near. because when you see other redactions, you see that they're long, right? This is a long redaction. Although that one has a little doohickey on the top of it. So maybe somebody drew over that and then drew over that. I don't know. I geek out on this. Oh thing. yeah. There's like a, wait, wait. A that, bump. Yeah. Yeah. There's a bump right there where your mouse is. So yeah, it means that maybe somebody drew someone, a, box, a second box. Right. So in other words, they might've redacted a word and then another word. Interesting. Maybe. Yeah. Things we notice. Um, they also left us the period, which is a huge gift because we know now that that word fits inside that spot. If they'd gone over the end of the period, we would have no idea how long that second word was, mm. but we, we get that in point. So, uh, the big reveal, I suppose, is what I finally plugged in there was, Ooh, can you zoom in on that? Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is what fits and it fits pretty precisely. Um, I wow. tried, yeah. A now, homicide via traumatic asphyxia. Yes. So I'm going to look into this a little bit further and see what other things could possibly fit because my very, very, very strong caveat is always, and I hate to belabor the point, but it's very important is this is still just a guess. Um, I seem to remember that I don't think homicidal fit in there. That was my, um, an, another initial guess of mine was, was it homicidal manual strangulation? I tried a lot it of shows how long the redaction is too. I'll say that mm -hmm. when I saw it, I was just thinking things like manual strangulation, but you, yeah. you literally put in five words to make yeah. it fit yeah. a homicide via traumatic asphyxia. Um, yes. Oh, and, and, and let but, me read the whole sentence too. The Fremont County Sheriff's office exhumed Tammy Daybell's body from her grave in Salt Lake city, Utah. The preliminary results of her autopsy appear her death was, and again, those two redactions, I was thinking two little words, and it's five here, a homicide via traumatic asphyxia. And I'm glad you read the whole sentence because it does make more sense that that's a word with, you know, that her death was, you wouldn't, you wouldn't really say it appeared that her death was manual strangulation. That doesn't make sense. Her True. death was a something. It would have to be the cause of her death. and Well, and this is cause and manner, but yes, exactly. Precisely. It doesn't say that the cause of her death was manual strangulation. Right. Um, the other thing I'll say is when manual strangulation wasn't fitting in, I backed off for a little and decided to just sort of think, think, think. And I remembered that uh, Chad's, Chad's children in an interview said that, that they were told that she died by asphyxiation. So then right. I started looking into scholarly journals about asphyxiation and I pulled up a couple of scholarly journals on um, scholarly journal websites and, you know, not the Daily Mail or something and uh, nothing against the Daily Mail. It's just not scholarly. Uh, <laughs> and I learned about this concept of traumatic asphyxia. I am clearly just an armchair quarterback here, but what I read was, um, Traumatic asphyxia is like when your chest is compressed, like the astral world tragedy. Um, and in one of the papers it mentioned, or by having your chest kneeled on. Oh. I do not know if smothering is included on traumatic asphyxia. I think it might be. And the point is strangulation means they cut off the airway somehow, right? With the ligature right. or your hands or by hanging yourself. Asphyxiation, I think traumatic asphyxia is also smothering. Um, why the scholarly journals call it asphyxia? They do use that as a noun and not asphyxiation. I do not know. Hmm. That would be a question for Joseph Scott Morgan. <laughs> well, maybe we can show this video to Joseph Scott Morgan and see <laughs> if he can share more insight 
into yeah. this possibility. Perhaps. So wow. I feel yeah. I feel pretty confident about this guess. I, I, I but I'm never ever going to say it's 100. percent Yeah, and and that's because you tried so many other things, or yeah. yeah. Did you stick to strangulation purely in asphyxia yes. uh, because yes. of the Daybell children? Okay. Yes, and that's another. I mean, well, and because of what we do know, well, because of the fact that it was some sort of way of dying that was initially ruled natural and then not. Right. So there was no blood. There was no, she wasn't shot. She wasn't right. You know, I mean, maybe it, maybe it says something about poisoning instead, right? That's the big theory about, about Alex. People are wondering if they were poisoned by the same thing. I don't think that. So this is showing my bias. My bias is that I do not think that they were poisoned, but so I didn't try out something about, I didn't look at scholarly articles on poisoning and I didn't try out poisoning in here for all I know. It could say a homicide via malachite poisoning. <laughs> I'll have to try that and see if it fits. I'll let you know. <laughs> Again, I don't. A few people are going to want that ruled out, so you might need to try. You might need to try it. I, I, um, I not to make light of it, but I don't think that she was poisoned by malachite. Yeah, you know what? I have a bias too, and I want to throw out that too. <laughs> I don't think she was poisoned either, and I also want to point out that. Um, Lori was out of town. She was in Hawaii mm-hmm. when Tammy died. Alex was in town. I think that's really important too, to cause of death because um, if anyone did poison, I, I think that Lori might be more of the, uh, you know, she put Xanax in Charles's drinks. Yes. She gave JJ medicine so he would sleep. Yeah. Um, that's what I'm pointing out that that's mm-hmm. more of like Lori's maybe thing. Yeah. Where Alex was more of, um, you know, he he would he shot at Tammy. Police have said, um, and missed. He he shot at Brandon, according to law enforcement, and missed. He did shoot Charles. So um, clearly, Tammy wasn't shot, but Alex was parked uh, near the house at the time Tammy died in a church parking lot. So I'm going to assume he, unfortunately, helped whoever else Chad was there too. I mean, not in the parking lot. I just mean in town and called 911 about his wife. So I just want to point out too, that I also don't think it was necessarily poison. That doesn't seem to be um, Alex's. I I do. I I, I think that um, asphyxia is more along the lines of how this possibly happened. Um, and you can unshare. I assume that's how JJ was killed too. So oh, via asphyxia or by poisoning, not poisoning. I, I believe it was asphyxia. Yeah. Um, you can unshare the screen if you want. Cause I, I think I want to, I want to make sure that I'm not, uh, if there's anything else I wanted to share with you guys and I don't want to love your knives. Also for everyone wondering about Julie's knives that hasn't heard the story. We love your knives, Julie. She's also an incredible chef. Thank you. You're welcome. In fact, you're starting a TikTok. Uh, <laughs> I have that thing video, you. but share that, share your TikTok. <laughs> uh, I think it's Ms. Ms. Julie Holden or Ms. Julianne Holden. It's not, it's not anything strange. It's my name. Ho Ho Holden. Not oh, it might be Ms. Ho Holden or Mrs. Ho Ho Holden. Could be. Yeah, there's an egg video on there that's I mean it's not hasn't gone viral, but it's gotten like a thousand views, like 50 likes. Well, it's a pretty good video, I'll be honest. Makes my me want avocado toast. Well, thank you. you. My, my teenager's <laughs> friends were like, put that stuff on TikTok, it'll be popular. And I'm like, oh. And I also love I love the hmm. loin fire sign behind you. <laughs> And for those wondering about our loin fire merchandise, which is that design, um, more is coming. I took it off for a bit uh, for quality control. I was concerned mm-hmm. about something that I'd heard, so um, I'm gonna I'm working on that, and I'll have the link to this shirt in the description of this video. That's I did great. not mean to throw that all out and interrupt you. Go ahead. No, not at all. I'm I'm love I'm, your knives. I was my I point of to- that. I wanted to kind of flip through all of my screens and make sure that I had shared everything with y'all that I wanted to share. Um, did I, you, make, you made a really cool video kind of showing how you did redactions once. Yeah. Um, well, that's some of the stuff I showed earlier. Oh yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I don't think that there's anything else. I mean, I have more of those videos, 
Uh, but I share all of the ones that, um, yeah, you showed it, you showed it with the overlay and everything. I, I did, but I appreciate you asking about that because the thing is, and again, I, I, I have a tendency to, to belabor points, but when you have an entire paragraph typed out and you take all of that text and you overlay it on the text that you know you have with the big black boxes in it and all of those other words match up, then you know your guesses are at least really robust, that they're really, because when it's wrong, like the video shows, it shoves the text out of alignment. It's if, wrong when it's wrong. It's one wrong. little E or one little O or one little U, it pushes things out of alignment and it it's just much more obvious. It's just so much, I don't know, more robust than um, really just about any other method, in my opinion. Yeah. And the traumatic <laughs> asphyxia, again, that's not a term I was familiar with, but neither. you, neither you, but so when you went in and researched and learned that that was a term used. In, right. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And how sad. Yeah. Yeah. It's very sad. Um, I'm just glad he didn't get away with it. Yeah. Me too. So. Me too. Julie, thank you. I do think we should start a series. Uh, redactions by Julie. <laughs> and maybe people can put in their requests for redactions. Although we joke with Julie, we're like, Julie, can you, can you do this one? And then we send her an entire redacted page and she laughs. She's like, yeah, no, can't. But if, if it is short enough, um, and if you guys have questions about redactions in the FOIA documents. Um, again, those are on our, our Patreon for anyone that wants access thousands of pages, but if anyone maybe has a redaction question on the FOIA documents, uh, send it to hidden true crime at gmail.com and, uh, put Julie redaction question and I'll send them <laughs> to Julie and see if she can figure it out. Yeah. And another thing we could consider looking at in our little series too, since we've been talking about the probable cause document is, um, I came across some interesting things in there. It's not anything new. It's not anything that nobody's seen before, but the texts that they picked, because we've all been going through the texts, mm -hmm. the ones that they chose to put in that document, I find kind of revealing. When you retype an entire document, because I've retyped in now all of the known redactions, I went ahead and typed them in instead of just looking at them in the other PDF. I just wanted to do that. Um, when Julie's stressed, she does two things. When Julie, she cooks or she, she Research. transcribes. She calls it rage transcribing. <laughs> she has, oh, that's something else we need to share too. It's all the transcriptions you've done. Even some of my interviews and anyway, mm -hmm. Kate, go ahead with what you're about to say though. Well, it, it's, I think the reason why I'm drawn to those things is because, and the reason why I use this process is because I believe that you really get into the mind of a person. Um, for example, because this required me to type out some of the texts that Lori, uh, had sent to Zulima, I noticed that she will type a sentence. And if it ends with an, ex an exclamation point or a question mark, she'll type, oh my gosh, space, exclamation point, exclamation point. That's her noticed, habit. It's her habit. I noticed Charles actually does the same thing. He hmm. actually, in his texts would have a, a type along and have a sentence and then a space if it's going to end with an exclamation point or a question mark, quirky little <laughs> habits like this that people have. Um, so in doing this typing in, I'm getting into the mind of people a little bit. That's yeah, also that why sense. I like transcribing because I listen to it at uh, like half speed to two thirds speed, three quarter speed. And you start to hear these little ticks and the pauses are really long. So when there's a pause, you really notice, you start to notice that people say, um, more often than other times. And you start to wonder why are they saying I'm so much right here? You re it's very, it's a fascinating process to me. It is fascinating. And whenever you send us your transcriptions or what you pointed <laughs> out, it's always a fascinating read. So thank you for bringing some of your, I, you know, Julie, Julie is private, but I was like, please just bring some of your research to us. So thank you sure. so, so much. And, um, yeah. And, you know, and right. So we can do 
redactions by Julie, or we can also do ums and transcriptions by Julie. You no, know, you know, is another what one. What do you notice after transcribing, you know, this big area here? Mm -hmm. So that would be great. Thank you, Julie. You're welcome. Thanks for being with us. And until next time, we'll see ya. Bye-bye. <laughs>